session we discussed that the primary Mailad is the Mailad of Tishrei. And the day of the Mailad is going to determine Rosh Hashanah. And then we know Rosh Hashanah of the following year. And then the entire year falls into place. The Gemara Rosh Hashanah Dav Chaf discusses Dechiyais. Dechiyais are the, because the Mailad occurs on a certain day does not necessarily mean that Rosh Hashanah is going to occur on that day. The Gemara says, the Gemara says that there are certain times where we push off Rosh Hashanah not on the day of the Mailad. Ula Amar, Ula says we do this Mishum Yarkia. Rabbi Ancha Amar Mishum Masya. Which means as follows. If Rosh Hashanah were to fall out on a Wednesday, then that means Yom Kippur would fall out on a Friday. If Rosh Hashanah fell out on a Friday, then that means Yom Kippur would fall out on a Sunday. The, the, the Gemara here is saying that we're going to run into, into serious problems. Just, we're giving just a basic understanding here of where, where this Gemara is, the Gale of Misa, and that is Yom Kippur. We can't have two days of Shabbos, Shabbos, Shabbos in a row. We have Shabbos every week. If Yom Kippur were to fall out on a Friday or a Sunday, we would run into, into problems. Number one, problems of Yarkia. Yarkia are vegetables. You can't cook for two days. So if a vegetable was picked on a regular Yontif, you could cook. You could cook with Erev Tavshilin on Friday and so on. But here you're going to run into this problem. You can't cook the vegetable. It's going to go bad. Masya is if someone died, let's say Yom Kippur was on a Friday, if someone passed away Thursday, as Yom Kippur began, he can't be buried for two full days. And therefore, we want to go ahead, as the Gemara says, we want to go ahead and we want to push off Elul in a way to ensure that Yom Kippur doesn't fall out on a Friday or Sunday. This Tchiyah, Tchiyah means we push off Rosh Hashanah, is... is known as Le'adu Reish. We've often learned this rule, but the Gemara Rosh Hashanah brings to light the reason for this rule. Le'adu Reish means that Rosh Hashanah cannot fall out on a Sunday, Wednesday, or a Friday. Why would Rosh Hashanah fall out on a Sunday, Wednesday, or Friday? The answer is the Mailad. If the Mailad fell out on Sunday, technically Rosh Hashanah should be on Sunday. If the Mailad fell out on Wednesday of Tishrei, then technically Rosh Hashanah should be on Wednesday. So Chazal, no. We're not going to let that happen because if Rosh Hashanah falls on a Wednesday, Yom Kippur is on Friday, and we cannot have two days of Shabbos in a row, as we said, Mishum Yarki, Mishum Yasya. Just to give another example, uh, it's not the Gemara's example, but imagine if Yom Kippur was on Friday. When would women bench lich for Friday? It would be impossible. You couldn't bench lich because it's Yom Kippur. You can't bench lich. How would you cook for Shabbos? You can't because Yom Kippur, you're not allowed to cook. At all, so you would run into into serious problems. Again, the Gemara gave uh, gave these two examples. So we cannot allow Rosh Hashanah to fall out on Wednesday or Friday, or on Sunday. And the reason on Sunday is because then Hashanah Rabbah would fall out on Shabbos. And if Hashanah Rabbah would be on Shabbos, we would not be able to take the Hashanahs. And we perhaps would forget Tysus and Sukkot, Daf Ben Gimel of Beis, ask Akasha, we let Rosh Hashanah fall out on Shabbos, and we don't pull Shaifer, and yet the Minig Nevi'im of Hashanahs, that we push off a calendar. Think about it. The Moilat of Tishrei occurs on Sunday, and we go ahead and we push off Rosh Hashanah to Monday because of Hashanahs. Remember, not only is Rosh Hashanah getting pushed off, but all the Yom Taiv, Sukkot is pushed off, the previous Purim is pushed off, Pesach is pushed off, Shavuos, everything gets pushed off because of this. So we do that just for Hashanah. So Tais gives two answers. One is that, is that Rosh Hashanah, Shaifer, no, no one's ever going to forget Shaifer because it's in the Pasuk of Chumash. Whereas Hashanah is a minig, if you stop doing it one year, people next year will say, oh, it's not our minig. We don't take Hashanah. So to avoid that, we always make sure not to allow Hashanah Rabbah to occur on a, on a Shabbos. The other reason is that we have a second day Rosh Hashanah, so Shofar won't, Shofar won't be forgotten because it's the second day Rosh Hashanah that we will take, we will blow Shofar, whereas Hashanah, it would fall on Shabbos, that year it would be skipped, and therefore Chazal were afraid that it might be 
forgotten about. So for just as an example, in Tavshin Samach Dalit, 2003, the Mailad of, of Tishrei fell out on, on Friday. It was Friday, uh, early Friday morning. But Rosh Hashanah was Shabbos, Tavshin Samach Dalit, because Le'adu Rosh. We don't let this happen, and therefore we push off Rosh Hashanah. Now, if we let, in the last session, we spoke about Rosh Hashanah, the year being a certain amount of days. So the way you calculate it is you calculate the Mailan of this year with the Dchiyas, the Mailan of next year with the Dchiyas. You determine what day Rosh Hashanah is supposed to be, and then you fill in how many days in the year are required. You also have a Mailan Zakein. Mailan Zakein is discussed in detail on Davchaf as well. And we're going to explain the Balam Ba'or's explanation of, of the Mailan Zakein. The Mailan Zakein means Right? It's, it's a sugi here that the sign of Beside the Iber, Noel, Kainam Chatzais, Noel, Acha Chatzais, this is a Kisolik Rab Zera, Shalach, Lahu, Tsarche, Lila, Yaminach. It's a complicated sugi here, but we're going to explain the Balamor's explanation of, of this sugi and exactly what a Mail Zakin is. A Mail Zakin means the Mailat occurs at 12 noon or later. If the Mailat occurs at 12 noon or later, then Rosh Hashanah is pushed off to the next day. For example, in Tavshin Pei Vav, the Mailad of Tishrei, 2025, the Mailad of Tishrei is going to be on Monday, shortly after, after noon. Right, about a little, a little more than 10 minutes after noon. So it's too late for Rosh Hashanah to be on Monday. Rosh Hashanah has to be on Tuesday. Rosh Hashanah will be on Tuesday because it's a Mailad Zakein. It's an old Mailad. The simple explanation is that we're trying to we're trying to replicate the Sanhedrin. You can't see the new moon for a certain period of time. So if the mile is occurring after 12 noon, it's not going to be visible that day. So we can't make Rosh Hashanah that day, and therefore Rosh Hashanah is pushed off to the next day. Sometimes it's pushed off another day. For example, in Tavshin Ayin Zion, the Mila, 2016, the Mila occurred on Shabbos afternoon uh, after, after 4 p.m. Excuse me, after 2 p.m., on Shabbos afternoon. So we had a double Dechia, because Shabbos afternoon, Meilad Zakin, has to be the next day. Next day was Sunday. Le'adu Rosh. So it has to go until the next day, and therefore Rosh Hashanah was pushed off until Monday. The Balamor explains this Gemara that it, it takes 24 hours to see the new moon. It takes 24 hours. And somebody in the world has to see the new moon on that day. The world, the, the western tip of the world is... 270 degrees west of Yushalayim, 18 hours west, which is the same line as six hours to the east, 90 degrees east of Yushalayim. It's a line that runs through Changchung, China, and Australia. And if you're standing on the eastern side of that line, you're on the western tip of the world. At that point, it's going to take 24 hours, at anywhere, it's going to take 24 hours to see the Mailad. If it's still Monday at that point, then you can make Rosh Chayim. So if the Mailad occurs at 11.59 a.m., the time on the western tip of the world is 18 hours back. Let's say it's Monday. It's the Mailat occurs 11.59 a.m. on Monday. Okay? The time in that line is 5.59 p.m. on Sunday. It's 18 hours back. It'll be seen 24 hours later, which is 5.59 p.m. on Monday. So Rosh Hashanah is on Monday. However, if the Mailat is at noon, that means even on the western tip of the world, the Mailan will not be seen by anybody. The new moon cannot be seen by anybody until it's already Monday night, 6 p.m., is the average Shkia time. That's it. Rosh Hashanah cannot be Monday. Rosh Hashanah has to be pushed off until Tuesday, until the next day. Interestingly enough, is this Balamor is the source of the international dateline, the opinion of the Chazanish of where the international dateline is, and that is this line, 90 degrees east of Yushalayim, is the line, because in the discussion of Balamor, he's saying the western tip of the world, the, the latest, or the earliest time, so to speak, the last possible place on earth, he's saying is 18 hours west of Yushalayim, which is a, a six hours east of Yushalayim. That would be the international date line. The Chazanish says you cannot have a line going through land, and therefore he goes ahead, and based on the site Eilam, Talmud of the Rush, and therefore the line goes around the coast of Asia and the coast of Australia, those are on the Israeli, those are the Israel side, that side, and then everything to the east is on the American side, including Japan and 
New Zealand. So this is where the whole issue of the Shiloh of the, of the Dateline comes up. Of course, 80 years ago, this past year, Kippur, this was the Shiloh in Kobe, Japan, with the Talmudim of the Mir, that, that this came up exactly where is the International Dateline. But the basis is this sugya in Rosh Hashanah on Davchav. There are two other Dechiyas. One other Dechiya is known as, as Get Red, but before the two other Dechiyas. The Meilat Zakein is only a rule by Rosh Hashanah. You could, although rarely, you could have a Meilat Zakein on other months. For example, in 2071, the Meilat of Shvat is going to be at 3.21 p.m. on Rosh Chaydesh. In 1902, it happened as well. The Meilat of Shvat was at 4.45 p.m. and 7 Chalakim on Rosh Chaydesh, well after 12 noon. So this rule only applies to Tishrei. The last two Dechiyais are known, at one is called Get Raid. Get Raid means that the Meilat occurs that at the ninth, after the ninth hour, 204 Chalakim. Gimel is Tuesday. Tess is nine hours. The day begins at 6 p.m. So this is roughly 3 a.m. and 204 Chalakim into the day which means if the Meilat occurs on Tuesday after the ninth hour, which is after um, 3 a.m. and 204 Chalakim, then Rosh Hashanah is pushed off to Thursday. In other words, this is before noon. The Meilat occurs at 3, 3 a.m. and 204 Chalakim or later. Rosh Hashanah is going to be pushed off. can't be Wednesday, so it has to go to Thursday. The reason for this tchia is without it, it would come out, if you did the calculations, you would need 356 days in the year, which we don't have. We can only have 355 at the most. Therefore, to avoid this problem, Rosh Hashanah is pushed up, making the year shorter, and therefore, we're able to facilitate that year. It actually becomes a 350, instead of 356, we move it up two days, the year becomes 354 days, and we give away a couple days to the previous year. The last Chia, which will not happen again to, uh, uh, between now and 6,000, is known as Betu Takpat Achar Ha'ibr. Get raid is only in a Shana Pshuta. It's only in a regular year. Betu Takpat is if the Milan occurs at uh, Monday, 15th hour, 589 Chalakim. Rosh Hashanah will be pushed off. 15th hour is... Um, sometime after 9 a.m., and 589 chalakim, then Rosh Hashanah is pushed up to the next day, to Tuesday. And the reason for this tchia is after an Ibriyar, without this tchia, the previous year would have to be 382 days, which we can't facilitate. We need at least 383, so we make Rosh Hashanah um, a day later. And by doing that, Achara Ibr, we ensure that the previous year works and has 383 days, and therefore it all works out. So those are the four Tchiyas that we have. A side topic of this is the International Dateline. We have Le'adu Rosh. Rosh Hashanah cannot be on Sunday, Wednesday, or Friday. If the Meilat occurs, then it's pushed off. Meilat Zakin, if the Meilat is at 12 noon or later, then Rosh Hashanah is the next day, or the day after that, if you have, if you have a Le'adu Rosh. And of course, Get Raid and, betut, and, and, get raid and Apshuta, or Betut Takpat Achar Ha'ibr, we also have as well um, to ensure that Rosh Hashanah will work out in a proper manner.